I'm gonna try to get over the awkwardness that you can hear me while I'm filming. Ciao! I'm drinking a glass of white wine because that is vacation. I am coming to you today with a book haul from Paris, but I am in fact not in Paris anymore. I am in my parents' house in Rome. It's a Parisian book video filmed in Italy. thought maybe to combine this with a few clips that I um, filmed in Paris, but I didn't really get to film as much as I wanted to, it just it didn't come to my mind when I was walking around the city like to film things and I never really filmed myself talking to the camera so if I have something, some kind of vlog type video, I'll try to make one with what I did film but I thought this is better just as a standalone video. In fun news, um, my luggage did not arrive to Rome so I have my parents clothes and my one outfit I brought to the um, airport. So let's talk about books. By the way, I wanted to make a little announcement that I started bookstagramming a little bit on a different Instagram. Um, so I'll link that below if you're interested. Um, anyway, so I've got a stack of books here. All the books that I've acquired since traveling to Paris, um, one of which I don't have with me, but I'll explain that. I think it's nine books, so that's quite a lot. The first two um, I bought as a gift for my dad because it was his birthday. I got first the classic choice was Outline by Rachel Cusk, which I just gave to my partner Ohad, who loved it so much, just as much as I did. It rocked her world, so um, I am really happy to gift it to another person, and my dad knows I love Rachel Cusk. He sends me Cusk articles a lot of the times when she writes for various newspapers and stuff, so I thought that it was about time that he reads it, so I got Outline. And then I got this one, which was a gift that I knew on this trip while I'm here for about a week I could maybe read while I'm here, um, so it was a gift also for myself, which is The Friend by Sigrid Nunes. You know this one, and you know that people love this one. I have many friends who think that this is such a great, perfect book. Um, and it's about basically human dog friendship relationship, which to me is just the perfect subject matter. Also dealing with grief, a woman loses her um, best friend, mentor, and she is kind of burdened with his huge Great Dane, which she doesn't want, and also her apartment building doesn't allow for dogs. I guess she slowly starts to develop a relationship with um, this Great Dane, and I don't know, I've just only heard great things about this, so I hope to give this a read while I'm here. And I thought that my dad would love it because he loves dogs also. Okay, now if we're on the theme of gifts, um, I'll stay with this one, which was Reverse. My dad brought me this book um, when they came to Paris. Um, and it's Time as a Mother by Ocean Vuong. I think Ocean Vuong needs no introduction, at least in my corner of booktube. Um, but if you don't know Ocean Vuong, he is a Vietnamese-American poet and novelist. You may be familiar with his um, most famous book, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, which was gorgeous. This is a, the highly anticipated new poetry collection, second poetry collection by Ocean Vong, about the loss of his mother and him kind of dealing with that um, a little less than halfway through. Um, and I don't want to speak too much about it yet. Beautiful color, cover. Did it the first poem? called The Bull is really a wow. It's very, very beautiful, very strong. It starts with a bang. So, and I remember something similar from his previous collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds. I remember that the first poem was magnificent. So that continued to this. So we'll see. If you've read this, let me know um, what you think about it. The first two books I bought um, in Paris 
We're from this bookstore called The Red Wheelbarrow. Um, it's one of the only English, like fully English bookstores in Paris. Um, it's not secondhand, it's a first-hand bookstore, so if you're looking for like secondhand vintage type of books, that wouldn't be the place to go, but I really enjoy being there. So the first book I bought, I already read. I left in Paris um, on the street because I felt like I'm buying books on this trip, but I can't necessarily bring them all back with me, so I will either keep them here in Rome or just put them on the street for someone to find and to read. So the first one I bought was Self-Portrait in Green by Ndaye, Ndaye something, French writer. I will put it here. She's a very young writer. I think she wrote her first thing at like 17 years old and won a big literary prize in France. Um, so that's really cool also. And naturally when I go abroad, I want to read um, a book by an author from that place or translated from the language in the place that I am. Now I'll talk about that in a wrap-up um, video. But very, very small book, short, obscure, strange, uh, which is my kind of thing. So obviously I like the color green. Left that on the street um, in Paris for someone to find, along with Lauren Groff's Matrix, which I also finished on that trip and left there. The second book I bought from that bookstore is this one, White on White. We're struggling with this name. She's a Turkish writer, I'm not sure. Esegul Savas, or Esegul Savash, um, or none of those options. <laughs> this is a, also a short um, book doesn't fall into the written in French category, but um, she's a Turkish writer that lives in Paris. So I felt like that is also fitting. And the main character, I think, I don't think it's explicitly said, but the main character, um, our narrator, is renting a room from a couple. And I think the, Par the city that it's taking place in is Paris, or I imagine it to be Paris. It's blurbed by Marina Abramovich, one of my favorite performance artists, and Lauren Groff, Olivia Sujic. On the front is Brandon Taylor, so it's highly um, spoken of. Renee from So I Read This Book here on YouTube and Bookstagram, she read this and really loved it. And actually, she was sending me a book that got somehow lost in the post and it was supposed to be this. So anyway, that didn't work out, but she said she's gonna send me something else. Um, love you, Renee. So I, I finished this last night on the airplane um, coming to Rome and very interesting. I just love the premise, which is this um, narrator who's studying um, nudity in, specifically in Gothic sculpture, or just in Gothic um, culture, kind of, or that time. What did nudity mean? Um, and that's super interesting to me, so I will also speak about this in a wrap-up. Gotta keep you guys waiting and watching. I really loved it, so there, I have like few, we'll talk about it later. Published by Harville Secker. 2022 it was published in the UK. And then four more I have here. Um, two are secondhand, two are not. So this was from, what was the secondhand? San Francisco, San, San Francisco Books, San Francisco Book Company, something like that. It was recommended to me as a secondhand bookstore by Jasmine on Bookstagram. Her Bookstagram is extreme metaphors. I really love her taste. I love her posts. I just really like her. She's also a beautiful um, artist. Her drawings are gorgeous, so anyway, you should definitely follow her. Um, but she sent me there, and I enjoyed browsing. And the two things that I got from there was this um, collection of Rilke poems. These are Sonnets to Orpheus. This was originally, I think, an English faculty library of Cambridge University copy um, because here there's few people who have overdue books with fines. Of course I know 
uh, the German poet Rainer Maria Rilke, um, but I haven't really read um, like a collection. And recently um, I made a stage piece called Debbie and um, one of the members of our cast suggested a Rilke poem for the piece and we ended up using it, so I thought it was fitting that I read some Rilke now. I'm about halfway through that. I started it this morning, kind of in a poetry um, pairing situation right now. And they actually are quite flattering to each other. Very windy, which is very nice, but I hope that I'm not like, the audio is not totally ruined. Then we have The Power Book by Jeanette Winterson. I just thought this cover was absolutely stunning. Um, Jeanette Winterson, I haven't read anything of hers. I am on the hunt for a secondhand copy of Written on the Body, um, loved by many, and I think brought to the book too by Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books. She's also written many other things, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, The Passion. There's a collection of essays called Art Objects, which I would be really interested to read. Um, but anyway, this looked like a really interesting book. An e-writer called Ali or Alex will write to order anything you like, provided that you are prepared to enter the story as yourself and take the risk of leaving it as someone else. You can be the hero of your own life. You can have freedom just for one night. But there is a price. Ali discovers that she too will have to pay it. Set in London, Paris, Capri, and cyberspace, this is a book that reinvents itself as it travels. Using cover versions, fairy tales, contemporary myths, and popular culture, the power book works at the intersection between the real and the imagined. Its territory is you. So that sounds really interesting, and already from the first few pages, um, I love the writing. Gorgeous. It just seems like it does something very interesting in form or like how it tells a narrative. I feel like it's interesting. So I can't wait to read that. Last two and I'll be finished. Um, I really wanted to read more Anais Nin after um, reading last year her book um, House of Incest, which I thought was so beautiful and her writing just um, blew me away, truly. Um, similarly to how my experience when I read my first uh, Clarice Lispector, um, obviously they're very different, but Anais Nin, I wanted to find her actually in the secondhand bookstores, but I couldn't find, and if I did find, then they were like really beautiful editions, but for like very, very, they were very expensive, so I thought I can um, justify that. These two modern classic versions from just a mainstream bookstore in Paris. The first is A Spy in the House of Love. This is a little novella um, about Sabina, is the name of the character, is a firebird blazing through 1950s New York. She's a woman daring to enjoy the sexual license that men have always known. Wearing extravagant outfits and playing dangerous games of desire, she deliberately avoids commitment, gripped by the pursuit of pleasure for its own sake. So that sounds very fun and sexy, and um, Anais Nin is also known as an erotic writer, um, so that's that also really interests me. So I got this one, which is Delta of Venus. It says on the back, a joyous display of the erotic imagination. Her vibrant and impassioned prose evokes the essence of female sexuality in a world where only love has meaning. So. Also a beautiful cover. She just writes in like a very spellbinding way. It's so visceral and kind of puts you in a trance is what I experienced. Um, so I'm really excited to read that. That's all. How are you all doing? I feel like I haven't really been able to uh, film that much. Just work got so crazy. The period always between like March and the end of July um, just gets really crazy, which is fun and good, but uh, doesn't leave me a lot of time to film. So hope you guys are doing well. What are you reading? Comment below. Let me know if you read any of these, um, or if you have any of these and haven't read them, we can read them together. All, I think. Probably shouldn't buy any more books 
on this trip. Um, not that I have any luggage to even put them in, but who knows, because there's a bookstore here I really love in Rome. In the neighborhood that my parents live in, so that's dangerous. Um, big hugs, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.